We're gonna give you the best keys that you can use to get shredded for weightlifting, and we're gonna start right now. So when we're talking about getting shredded for weightlifting, we've just gotta identify, what does that even mean? We've gotta look at someone and say, that dude or that chick is totally freaking shredded. So when someone is shredded, typically we're gonna look at it and say they're probably around 10 to 12% body fat or lower. A lot of people will say they're 6% or 8% body fat, but typically that's around what you'll see as 10% if they're actually getting measured properly. So we've gotta just keep that in mind. So if we're looking at someone when they're peaking, and I like to think about Haley Riker, when she just lifted at the Pan American Championships or when she won the world bronze medal in Colombia, when she got that world bronze medal in the clean and jerk, she was noticeably shredded, like 100% for a chick, she's shredded, right? Then if we're looking at someone like Jacob Horst, when Jacob Horst snatched 145 kilos at 73 kilo body weight, which is an absurd snatch. Do the pound for pound math on that, it's absolutely insane. Jake was shredded, totally shredded to the T. So now we're gonna go into all those little aspects that led to Jake and Haley being as shredded as possible so that you can use them and in turn be shredded for weightlifting. So that first absolute key for getting shredded for weightlifting, right? We've got to look at one, I'm gonna give you two keys here actually, lifting heavy. But the second aspect of lifting heavy is lifting heavy with very specific variations. Okay, and I'm gonna give you one variation that you can use that we use with Haley leading into this past Pan Am Championships, which led to a massive PR on her snatch. Okay, so what we did for three straight months was working on a high pump snatch. And this is an exercise that we use quite a bit with our throwers who tend to have massive traps and massive shoulders, massive deltoids. So if we want to get shredded, we need to achieve some type of myofibrillar hypertrophy and maybe even further out from a competition. Let's say during the exposure phase or during the comprehension phase, we wanna achieve a little bit of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So if we're using a heavy variation, like a one pump, a two pump, or a three pump snatch, that's going to lead to better performance in their technique, but ultimately it's going to lead to more muscular development in the traps, more muscular development in the deltoids because of that finish, and even more muscular development in the lower back, glutes, and hamstrings. So that's gonna improve the technique, but also improve muscle mass, which will lead to that shredded capability. So that second key factor is going to trigger the mechanism that leads to muscular mass. Okay, so right now, the first two aspects that we went over is how can we develop that mass? How can we develop the adaptation to lead to more muscular growth? And that's where this second factor comes into play, is that during the exposure phase, during the comprehension phase, okay, and if you don't understand what these phases are, you can pick up garage strength program design so that you have a better understanding of that periodization model. But if we're looking at it and we're understanding that during these phases, we want high volume, High volume might be, you're doing a snatch for five sets of four, something like that. We're doing cleans, four sets of four cleans, and we're trying to push that quad set as high as possible. One of the key factors along with that high volume is keeping rest periods as low as we possibly can without really, really having a negative impact on our performance. So in the case of a four plus one clean, if I can get Haley to clean four reps at 105 kilos, I know that when we're backing off of the volume, she's going to be in good shape. She's gonna have really good muscular development and in turn, she's gonna be able to apply more force to the implement, the implement being the barbell. So if we think through that lens, during the exposure phase, during the comprehension phase, we have to be in a high volume situation to increase mechanical load, increase mechanical tension, but we also need to keep that rest period monitored. I would say for a quad set of snatches, a rest period of about a minute and a half, I guarantee that will suffice. For a larger, heavier individual, for a male, that might be a little bit longer. When we're looking at cleans, okay, a quad set, or even a set of five, let's say we're using two boxes for a set of five, this is when we're going to see that yoke really, really develop. The back really, really develop on these weightlifters, okay? But we need to do that, again, with about a minute and a half to two minutes of rest. If we're doing high rep sets of back squats or front squats, we can do unbroken methods. We can even use a slow eccentric into an unbroken where the exercise is gonna be done rapidly, but with a slow eccentric. 
And again, if we're doing that absolute strength movement with high volume, we have to make sure the rest period is around two minutes to two minutes and 30 seconds and no more than that. And that's going to lead to a very, very large development of growth metabolites, which in turn is going to lead to that myofibrillar hypertrophy. So that's the key factor. That second key factor is understanding high volume for technical coordination exercises and for absolute strength movements and what that rest period will look like. Okay, so the next two aspects. One, we're gonna give you a direct tip that you can use right now to improve your overall recovery. The final aspect, just stay tuned because we're gonna give you some really, really sick movements that you can implement right away. You can go try at the gym today. But that third key factor is improving your nutrition. And what does that mean? Okay, when we're looking at getting shredded, we need to make sure that we're actually in a caloric neutral position or a caloric deficit. If that happens, now we're gonna start to burn a little bit more of our calories and we're gonna start to lean out. If we wanna get shredded for weightlifting, we've gotta be lean, okay? We can't be bulking. So we need to look at, all right, over a three-day time frame, what is our total daily energy expenditure? You have to understand about where your total daily energy expenditure is going to be. Let's say theoretically, we're gonna be around 2,200 calories. If that's the case, then we should be in a 200 caloric deficit period, okay? So if we can say, I burn 2,200 calories every single day, and I'm only consuming 2,000 calories every single day. If I only consume 2,000 calories every single day for eight weeks, that's gonna help me lean out over that eight week time frame. I'll use Haley as an example. She's a 49K weightlifter. Okay, she typically walks around, right now she's 51 and a half kilos. Sometimes she'll be about 52. But if we plan this out properly, we can cut her calories and she will see negligible negative impacts on her performance on the platform. And in turn, she will get more shredded. She will cut out a little bit of that unnecessary fat that could lead to her being not as shredded for the purpose of this video. Okay, so if we plan that accordingly and we understand our macros and we even plan around, our protein should be about one gram per pound of body weight, okay? So in Haley's case, she should be consuming at least, at least 110 grams of protein, probably a little bit more. And then on top of that, if we look at her carbohydrates, it could be anywhere between three and four grams per pound of body weight. So around 250 to 300 grams of carbohydrates. That's where she's gonna get most of her energy from. And if we can time that around her training, that's gonna help optimize her energy in training. That's gonna help optimize her overall recovery. And then finally, the rest of the macros would fill in through fats. Okay, so we've gotta make sure that we understand total daily energy expenditure. We have to understand what our caloric deficit needs to be. We might factor in some refeeds here and there. We want to understand the macros and the macro timing. And in turn, that's gonna optimize our performance while also getting shredded for weightlifting. So now we're gonna give you four of the best movements that you can use to get as hypertrophic as possible while trying to get shredded for weightlifting. Okay, so when we're talking about hypertrophic exercises for weightlifting, I will say this. We typically will use, for accessories, we'll use you know, a lot of lower back work, a lot of work around the knees. That's gonna be factored in. But when we're trying to get shredded for weightlifting, I really wanna look at the problem areas. You're gonna get plenty of volume from snatches, from cleans, from jerks, from front squats, from back squats, from pulls. You're gonna get a lot of that volume put into place already. Your legs should be okay. Really? We wanna get shredded up top. We want our arms to get freaking big. And I think that that's one of the areas that we've gotta look at is like, what are the problem areas? And typically we'll see press outs could be a problem. So that's gonna be triceps, okay? Typically around the elbow joint. We also wanna make sure that we're stable in our shoulders. So we need to have those joint co-contractions. We need to make sure that we're hypertrophic enough in our shoulders. And that also leads to our lats, okay? So if our lats are strong, that's gonna help with our pulling strength. That's also gonna help us in that overhead position. So all of these accessories are gonna be based around those problem areas. I'm gonna give you four right now. The first one, okay? We're gonna go into dips. And I love using dips for weightlifters, okay? Because it's going to blow up their triceps. And if we can just get set, understand one, two, three, up fast, okay? One, two, three, up fast. One, two, three, up fast. And I wanna do all the way up to where we'll have our weightlifters do three sets of five weighted, and then we might do two sets of 17. It's gonna blow up their triceps, but it's also going to help their triceps get stronger so they're more stable when they're overhead in that split position. They're more stable when they're catching that snatch or catching 
that split jerk as well. So use dips at least once a week, I would say to start off, three sets of five, three sets of seven, something like that, and then put in those two drop sets of 17 to 20 reps, and it's gonna help you get more hypertrophic in your triceps and in your pecs. Okay, so the next exercise we're gonna go into, we've gotta think about lats, rear delts, biceps a little. A lot of weightlifters have small biceps, but one of the big crazy factors is that your bicep plays a major role in how stable your shoulder can be. Okay, so if we can try to hit all of those aspects, that's gonna lead us into that next exercise. That next movement is going to be a dumbbell chest supported row. Okay, so I really, really like using dumbbells. We also have a lot of crazy barbells that we use with this. And this is going to be something that we wanna do four sets of 20, four sets of 30, just crazy, crazy volume so we can get a lot of blood flow and just try to feel as hypertrophic as possible. So we can get set, put your feet on the bottom of the bench. And if you don't have a bench, you can do chest supported row. I mean, you could use an incline bench. You could use a, a bent over row, but try to minimize how much swaying will go into it. Try to really control that chest position. Okay, because we want to really focus on the lats and the biceps and the rear delts and the rhomboids more so than what our hamstrings and lower back will be doing. That's one of the downfalls of a bent over row or a pen lay row is that we tend to use more of our lower back and our hamstrings. So we're gonna get set here, okay? And I wanna go up, control down. Pinch those shoulder blades together to activate the rhomboids. And really focus on squeezing through those biceps, okay? now. Let's say we do four sets of 20 to 30 here. I wanna superset that with one of my favorite movements using our Power Elastic, available at garagestrength.com. And this is gonna be something that you could do standing here where we call this a clockwork extension. So we wanna put our knuckles together like this, come up, rotate those knuckles out, okay? You could do this standing, you can do this seated. One of the other unique aspects that we might even use here at Garage Strength is that we might take this, and if I have somebody who tends to press out in the snatch, Okay, so let's pretend, I can't really press out on my right elbow, but let's pretend I do that. One of the ways that you can really train that directly is that if we have someone who presses out in the snatch, it's gonna happen in the bottom. So it's fun to do a lot of bodybuilding movements, but we should do them in a specific setting. So if we get into that bottom position here, I'm really tight, and I'm here, now we think about, punching out, bending that barbell when we catch the snatch. So that's why I like the clockwork movement is that we're here and we rotate out with the elbows. And that's why I like to think about catch and bend that barbell. But you should do that in the actual applied position where you tend to see those press outs. So you can do dumbbell chest row, superset that with the clockwork tricep extensions in whatever position you find favorable. You do that for four sets of 20, get a nice pump and a little bit out of breath like me. So the next area that we're looking for to develop on weightlifters to get shredded is their upper back. Again, their rhomboids, their traps, a little bit of their lats, their rear delts. We cover all this inside of our program, Bodybuilding for Weightlifting. You guys can go to garagetrank.com. You can pick that up today. It's like 12 weeks of bodybuilding implemented with weightlifting. It's gonna help you get as shredded as freaking possible. Now, the next movement I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna grab these, okay? We're gonna do a meadow swing. This is gonna be easy. It's just looking at time under tension. I'm here, slight bend in my elbows, and I'm just swinging. A lot of people say, well, that's a, rear, that's a reverse fly. It is not a reverse fly, okay? This is an actual meadow swings. And you can even get to the point where you might do like 30 to 35 pounds, and you do 30 to 40 reps. You wanna absolutely blow up that upper back. Our upper back tends to be more slow twitch. So it responds really, really well to long periods of time under tension. Now, I'm gonna give you an alternative. If you don't have access to dumbbells, you know, a lot of weightlifting gyms tend to just be platforms and barbells. Maybe some pull-up racks as well, dips or dip racks as well. You can do pull-ups, it's great exercise to get shredded. But if you don't have access to dumbbells, you can use our strength band, our Power Elastic strength band. Now this is one of the best Meadow Swings alternatives. It's gonna use this, we come forward, Okay, we're here and we're just going. And then as you fatigue, you can add in a little bit more elbow flexion, but this will absolutely blow up your upper back and those rear delts. Again, three to four sets, 
30 to 40 reps. You can pick up our programming, bodybuilding for weightlifting, head over to garagestrength.com. You can also pick up our Power Elastics so that you can get shredded. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.